Welcome to this session of Cine Art Therapy. My name is Altaz, and I decided to pick up and watch this film after watching an amazing video by Solitary Ronin uh, called Backlog of Shame, where he's going through all the second run DVD titles. The company is called Second Run DVD, but of course they also have Blu-rays now, uh, not DVDs exclusively. So he was going through, you know, the wonderful titles he's picked up from Second Run, and it reminded me that I also have a small Second Run backlog uh, of films, and uh, I actually picked up those films thanks to Solitary Ronin because he had made a video a few months ago letting everyone know that <coughs> Second Run um, DVD titles here in the UK on HMV and through Amazon were being sold for £10 a piece. And he was right in saying uh, you can do a lot worse uh, for a tenor. So the film's name is Mayak or The Lighthouse. And it's like uh, in Russian and Armenian. Here it is, you can see. So that the film has, here's the spine in the back and you can see the film has some wonderful photography which we'll get into and this film is about uh, an Arme a young Armenian woman who is now living in Russia and decides to return back to a tiny Armenian village um, in order to uh, meet with her grandparents and hopefully get them out of this village. Now, we learn through the film that this situation, there's a uh, conflict situation. So I don't know much about the war in the Caucasus around, around the 90s, so I won't speak too much about what the circumstances were of that of that conflict I, I don't know too much about it but I am definitely curious to learn a little more about it after watching this film and when the film starts you get these uh, images it's very interesting how the film starts the film starts with it almost has like three starts so you see one there's a scene and we see this old burnt book uh, in a kind of sepia type uh, color the scene then we see a, an abandoned rail station with a train sitting just a little bit outside of the train station and you know with this mist and almost like a haunting quality as it's clearly abandoned then we move to a scene that completely jars us. It's it as it and is and it's as it's juxtaposed with this abandoned train scene, and it's uh, you hear this nice upbeat drumming music and people just dancing, jumping up and down, dancing, and 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 it's and it's a really touching moment. And they're looking at the camera and they're dancing, and the way it's captured, it, it's it's really moving. And then we move into the fourth image, which is really uh, this image here, but minus the bird overlay. You know, the the, uh, the photography with the with the birds is also in the film, but they've laid it over, and it's really uh, Anna Kapileva, who's the actress, um, at the train station, I believe, she, and she's. Uh, sleeping or, or, she, or she's on the train and she's sleeping or it doesn't really look like she's sleeping even in that picture it's almost like she's meditating and you know her eyes are in that uh, her eyelids are closed and there's a there's a kind of relaxed um, expression on her face very meditative and it just stays there for a while and it's just really beautiful because you get this moment to observe uh the face and then just slowly you, you start feeling an appreciation for for the beauty of that face and it's it's not just because you're just seeing 
um, a beautiful woman, but it's really that you are just observing a human being. You start feeling um, a recognition for their for their beauty, and and this is one of the really great things about this film and how it's been shot, and it is that. It's the camera stays in in a in a in place for long periods of time to really give the audience an opportunity to observe the world. So so we can see that uh, the director Maria Sakian, who you know tragically passed away at the age of 37 back in 2018 from cancer. So. You know, we actually don't have the ability to see more of her works. I think she's done some three films, and I'd love if uh, Second Run releases the rest of her films because I'd love to watch them. But what? Getting back to uh, the film, she the film is really about immersing you in that world. It's it's not a complex narrative. This film is experiential it's it's about understanding that world she she wants to take you on this journey which if you read uh some of the uh wonderful extras in the booklets that's that's provided in there and uh an amazing uh visual essay as well that's included as an extra also her short film uh that was her uh, university dissertation is included in here uh, so lots of great extras and what we learn from there is that this is a uh, biographical this film is biographical uh, or semi-biographical so she's very much wants you to take you into that experience and and the experience is that experience of returning home and then where home actually is so she does this um placement of the camera for long periods of time so you're really observing you really get a chance to look at everything that's in this picture uh everything going on uh all elements of it you know the people in it what they are doing or or the nature or uh just the uh lena the the main character just going home and, and clearly going to a home that seems to be have been unoccupied for a while or abandoned, but things are just the same, just there's dust and cobwebs and, you know, she's uh, dragging her hand across the wall and she's picking out an old record and, and putting it to play. So everything is, it's not so long that things have deteriorated, it's all still there and preserved. And so she does a great job in creating a film that is uh, giving you the experience of somewhere where you're returning back, but it's also dreamlike. So you're somewhere in between memory and nostalgia and then the current reality. And there is just this, this blending. It's, it's dreamlike. There's lots of these long-held long shots and then there's a whole scene and dialogue going in the back. So you may be looking out at nature and then these two people are having a discussion or something is going on. So you're not always watching dramatically uh, these scenes being acted out by the actors. It's actually a dialogue going on between the two as it's taking those shots. So it's like one thing weaving to another. Um, and then you also see various aspects you see some of the mm, social troubles of people uh, in situations that's reflecting the social trouble they're in then the situations reflecting how people are finding humor even in such a difficult situation then you are completely drawn out by these jarring moments that remind you there is an ongoing conflict and how vulnerable everyone is to the events uh, these events and you know what that could mean in their life that could mean sudden death uh, then you also have uh, 
motifs of looking at, um, you know, trying to stay on course in terms of what the objective is, which is to actually get the grandparents to a place of safety in, in Moscow. But you yourself feeling this hesitance because of you once again feel that connection once to where you come from and, uh, you know, how it's pulling you back into that world and that, that world that feels like, you know, a warm sweater or a blanket, despite it maybe even being a bare bones environment and, and, and the tragedy that exists from, uh, being forced to leave a place, not voluntarily leaving a place. And, um, there is some very interesting, uh, connection to, uh, discussion of rootedness, uh, as in the rootedness of a tree. And, you know, you can see some people just being in place and can't, while this is all going on, there there is the question of why, you know, what would I leave for? So it it is a really fascinating film. It's it's not plot driven. It's really an an experience film. And it's and it's just a wonderful, captivating experience. It's a beautiful film. And one additional thing I wanted to say about it is that it felt very much, um, for me, Terrence Malick. Like, it reminded me of Terrence Malick's films where nature is very much a part or a character in the film. Uh, so there's the, the photography of, of nature is also part of the narrative and it gives it this spiritual meditative uh, feel where you're going from the larger like uh, bird's eye view with everything with nature and the people in it and the war going on and, and then you're going back down to individual situations and uh, that's that's absolutely wonderful and it also reminded me of uh, Kieslowski as well in terms of you know taking you into a world really showing you the the relationships and um, you know in the back they also say that this is very uh, uh, inspired by Tarkovsky's uh, dramas which I don't know I haven't seen any of his dramas I, I would say I don't know uh, if it, Andrei Rublev would uh would qualify or, or Solaris. I could see a Solaris esque feel for sure in terms of its meditativeness and the person exploring and it being a bit hazy and the audience is kind of going along and, um, um, peering in and, and investigation, investigating along with, with the character. So I could definitely see that. Um, my, uh, Opinion is not fact, as Sol Solitary Ronin said. He said all us YouTubers need to recognize our opinions are not fact. So in my opinion, this is a wonderful film worth seeking out. If you have access to second-run titles, you can get in physical media, or you can try to seek it out uh, online or digitally as wherever you may find it available. I think you'll find it worth your while. And it's a it's a 70 minutes so it's not too long of a commitment uh definitely worthwhile so i'll catch you in the next video thank you for stopping by bye bye